Welcome back to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greater beauty, skincare, and more. I try it out for you so you know what to buy, and more importantly, lit that to buy. Today I am back with the 11 Unrivaled Sun Serum, SPF 35. I reviewed the lotion or the moisturizer, this guy, the On the Defense sunscreen. I was recommended to try this one, which is the serum, as I mentioned. Gave it a shot and tested it against the scorecard. I'm gonna tell you all about it, so if you wanna hear more about this, and which one I ended up liking more. You might already know, but you might not. It could surprise you, but well, let's get into it. Before I dive into this review, if you enjoy these honest reviews and you wanna keep seeing more of them, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell icon so you never miss a thing. I purchased this product all by myself. So you're getting my honest review here. No one's paying me to say any of the following. Just letting you know, per the huge, that's what you're getting over here. This serum SPF is $50. It is a lightweight serum that includes skincare plus mineral sunscreen with 25% zinc, reef safe, vegan, cruelty free, and dermatologist approved, which you guys know I love to hear because I'm like, what's which dermatologist? I wanna know. I'm gonna go ahead and run through the scorecard to review this serum. If you wanna know what the scorecard is, all the details are below on that. It's seven key questions that give you a well-rounded, objective review of these products. It's the foundation of every review that I have over here for that exact reason. So it starts with the first question, which is all about ingredients. On the list on Credo, it says naturally derived, natural, naturally derived. I know they're trying to show integrity and it's a selling point that it's naturally derived. Natural doesn't always equate to good and positive. So I would just like leave that out. I feel like it just opens the door for a lot of ambiguity. Um, so that's just me nitpicking. And the other ingredients looked pretty good. It is a short list of recognizable, to me at least, ingredients. There are coconut oil derivatives. My skin loves them. Your skin may not, so that's why I'm flagging it. But otherwise, it looked pretty great. And it is made in collaboration with the sunscreen company. It's a very reputable company out of Canada, so I'm not surprised that the ingredients look so good. Next up, application. Well, the claim here is that this is lightweight and it absorbs quickly. That's what that means. Okay, this is a 100% lightweight. This is probably the lightest weight SPF that I have found. The moisturizer was not that much for me. It wasn't heavy. It just was a little bit thicker and kind of separated oddly. You can watch that full review if you wanna see it. This, however, snap tests right after you apply. If you can snap your fingers and they don't go then it's good. It really won the snap test instantly, did a great job. I personally am not a fan of the dropper application. This is closed. This is open, it pops up, and then you press it to get the serum into the dropper. I find this gets clogged often, and it also doesn't pull up enough of the product into the actual dropper, so I was using my fingers. So I'm not really a fan of the dispenser components. Oh, that sounds so professional. Would have just loved your basic dropper with the rubber top, maybe? That would have been fine for me. But besides that, I feel like the application was very easy, very simple, very lightweight and silky, and it dried like that. I got a four out of five on the scorecard. Next, when it comes to SPF, you gotta talk about the finish and the white cast. It was a huge success there. I saw nothing, no contrast, no anything. It was just this clear, silky situation that glided on and left nothing behind. When I applied things underneath, if I had a moisturizer underneath and put this on top, fine. But when I started putting product on top, of it, it did something a little weird. And I think that's because the claim is that it is demi matte and gives a velvety finish. So I think because of that, it didn't perform very well working with other products on my skin in terms of liquid base coverage products like foundation or CC cream or a tinted moisturizer. Um, regular old face cream or just wearing it on its own, which a lot of people might do if you're using this and you're playing tennis, like Venus. Bring something outside and you don't want to worry about wearing anything else on top, I think you'd be fine. I also think a powder foundation or tinted powder might be okay over this. I didn't have as much of an issue there. I almost gave it a five because the white cast is just not there. But in terms of finish, I also wanted to take into account the blending, which is why I brought it down just one little number down to a four out of five on the scorecard. Next up, reapplication and wear test. So you're supposed to reapply SPF every two hours. Oftentimes, if you apply SPF and then you're wearing foundation or bronzer or some type of color on top, how are you going to reapply? And then what, like get everything all weirded out, meshed and zhuzhed all over your face. Reapplication can be tricky. You can use a spray that I've recommended in the past, but I wouldn't depend on that if you really need a lot of sun coverage, if that's a huge concern and you're out in the sun. I think that is where this could really also be a huge 
win. This is so lightweight and so silky that you can just take it on your hands and press it over whatever you have on. Is it gonna be perfect? No. Ideally, you're wearing this and you're really not wearing much of anything else except maybe your skincare underneath. So overall, I think it is a really good option for reapplication. I think it's more convenient even though I'm not a huge fan of the dropper, but I think because of the texture and the weight of this, it will be easily reapplied. Speaking of that velvety finish, it does do that. It gives that non-shiny finish, which is really huge when you think about it in terms of SPF products out there. It's very rare to find things like that. They're out there, but you don't see a lot of them. Overall, I looked at the level of oiliness on my face and it kept it looking non-oily, non-greasy. It still maintained a little bit of that velvety finish after eight hours. So I've got a four to five on the scorecard there. What is this? What are we praying? Is this a non-irritating formula? I just look at the red flag ingredients here and the potential to irritate. It's different for every skin type. Consult a dermatologist. I'm not a cosmetic chemist. All of those disclaimers aside, I think it did a great job. I didn't feel any irritation. If that changes, I'll update you here. It received a four out of five on the scorecard. I didn't really love the scent here. If you don't like the scent of prickly pear, it doesn't immediately dissipate. So just wanted you to know that. And finally, is this a consciously created product? It is vegan, it is cruelty free, reef safe, glass bottle, plastic components, but glass bottle is a step in the right direction. It's doing really well, except as you know, or if you're a subscriber, then you know, and thank you for being a subscriber, that if it doesn't have refills available, it cannot rate above a two on this question. It's doing a lot here. There's a lot of things to be excited about, but it doesn't have refills available yet. So it received a two out of five on the scorecard. Oh, and I also want to note that they did say the packaging is made of PCR, post-consumer recycled material, recyclable materials whenever possible. I don't know if this had that in there. I didn't see it. They're looking at it, but I don't think recycling is necessarily the answer. It's pretty obvious by now that it's not. It helps. It helps. It helps. It's, it's a set of things that need to happen. So anyway, I digress, but just wanted to throw that out there and give them credit where credit is due. Total score here was a 22 out of 30 and it did pretty well. If it had refills, this would have been one of the highest scoring products. One more note that I had written down here that I wanna just tell you about the prickly pear. It is supposed to soothe the skin and it is the third to last ingredient. So if you're up in arms about that and you're worried about it, just know it's lower on the list. So there's a lower percentage of it in here. Adding that little note for you for funsies. Now it's time for the wrap up with my final verdict. The things that I loved about this serum, SPF. <laughs> so silky. The texture was amazing, it was incredibly lightweight, and it swept on like a dream, gave a velvety finish, so it did mitigate a little bit of the shine that was normally there. And there was no greasiness, no oiliness at all. A nice amount of SPF at 35. I didn't even know it was on my face. And there was no white cast. As far as reapplying goes, it does a better job at reapplying than other SPFs that I've tried. Things that I wasn't a fan of. <laughs> The scent, I felt it was a bit overwhelming. The dropper, mm, and there are no refills available. Really, there's more pros than there are cons here. The million dollar question is, would I buy this again? I would if it weren't for the scent. I really am just not a fan of the scent. However, I might find myself gravitating back to this. Kind of nothing else like it out there. For me, this feels like something you would wear if you're not a big makeup person, if you're not a big foundation or base coverage person, or you're just going out for the day and you need something and you don't care about having that extra coverage. It doesn't necessarily play the best with those coverage type products. Put this on over a moisturizer, you have your SPF, you're not gonna look greasy, it's not gonna slide off the face by the end of the day, and you will not see a white cast. That's where I think this is going to be the winner. If that's the case, then you can reapply it very easily and not worry about getting anything else messed up in terms of makeup on your face. For now, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna repurchase it. If I change my mind, I'll let you know. It doesn't mean I don't think it's an incredible product, but I have other ways of applying SPF that just seem to work better for me, my life, lifestyle and what I wear on my face every day. You want to see some of those favorites? I have the new Brits Picks Guide coming out real, real soon. I know I've been talking about it. It's going to be back on the site, so link below to that. That's what the Style Shaker Scorecard says. That's what I think about it. What do you think about it? Have you tried it? Do you love it? Do you want to try it now? I know $50 is a high price point for something like this. Let me know. Share your comments below. I love hearing from you as always. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you found it helpful, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon so you never miss another thing. And oh yeah, I forgot to tell you by the way, uh, if I'm going to choose one or the other, which would I choose? This. Hands down. Serum. No question. All right, now that I said that, I'm gonna go put everything away and I'll be right back here with some more reviews very soon. Until then, bye.